Hey everyone, really excited segment here. We're gonna be talking about NVIDIA Tensor RT. This is an ecosystem of APIs for high performance deep inference, uh, deep learning inference, and also Tensor RT LLM, um, which is also an easy to use a Python API to define large language models and a really exciting use case for it from base 10. And so they're gonna show you how it is that they're using it to help companies with inference. Um, so, and I've got Amir here, who is the CTO of Base10. So Amir, tell us more about Base10. Yeah, so we're a five-year-old machine learning infrastructure company with a very singular focus. Uh, we do one thing and we do it well, and that is inference. Um, inference for the folks, someone new to AI is the serving of the models, not the training and the fine tuning, but the serving in production at scale. Uh, that is our, our, our singular focus, and, and then the value proposition there is that you get really three things uh, out of the box uh, with base 10. Uh, you uh, get uh, peak performance, uh, whether that's uh, latency or, or throughput, um, and you get to define that. Secondly, you get very high reliability uh, and availability. This is for you know, mission-critical inference workloads. And then thirdly, you get the... Uh, cost efficiency out of the box. These models are large and, and very expensive to run. Uh, and so you really want to balance that peak performance with the cost efficiency aspect. Yeah, that definitely sounds like you're be using AWS for that scale uh, performance, I can imagine. So maybe you can tell the listeners understand how it is that you're using AWS. Yeah, so really maybe I can break it down uh, to like, what does it take to serve these models at scale? What, what does it take to do, you know, serve the mission critical inference workloads for our customers, uh, demanding customers, you know, companies like, you know, Patreon and, and, and Writer and, and many healthcare companies as well who are uh, you know, really uh, relying on, on this kind of performance AI phone call companies. Um, and it, it really takes two aspects to, to running these models um, at, at scale. Uh, so, one is uh, performance at the model level. Um, in other words, uh, is your model, imagine your model running on a single GPU, whether it's open source model or, or your custom model, uh, is, it, is it performing as peak? So for example, for an LLM, uh, are you getting the highest throughput that you possibly can? Uh, are you getting the fastest time to first token that you possibly can? Uh, and so uh, there's there's a lot of work that goes that goes on that side. Uh, we've been partnering on that side uh, with Nvidia. You know, you mentioned Tensor RTLM. Uh, we have a big product launch uh, that we just did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, uh, that that then really makes it easy for the average engineer, really, who is more and more every day is being exposed to inference problems at their at their jobs, uh, to be able to really create these customized engines. Uh, that that perform uh, as 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 well as as as, as uh, sort of like low latency and high throughput as possible. Um, and these engine, the, the building of the engine is really hard. Uh, and so this is why we, we built this layer on top of it. Uh, these engines are really customized for the specific hardware that it's running on, like the tensor parallelism that it's running at, like the input and output max token token count that it's running at so so that's that's some work that we've done over there along with you know different additional mechanisms and uh kv cache mechanisms and uh you know uh, medusa and and uh other techniques so that's one aspect however that's not enough um in, invariably at some point that model running in a single gpu is getting uh, it's going to get too much traffic and need to horizontally scale it to be able to meet that traffic that's not an ml problem anymore that's an infrastructure problem and that is where we uh, rely heavily on on AWS. Um, we're you know, big users uh, of, of of EKS um, on on the Kubernetes side, with ECR and the Container Registry side. Um, heavy users of of S3 as well, um, and, and so like and, and a bunch of other AWS services. Like together, really, they help us with that second aspect of running these models at scale, which is horizontally scaling the model when you get that high of a traffic, uh, scaling it up. When the traffic is is there, scaling it down quickly. When the traffic is not there, to say to save our customers money, um, all of those things really like come together. Um, both of those aspects are needed for for running in production. Really fascinating. Um, I'd love to be able to see it. Can you show us a demo? For sure. Uh, so let's see. Um, I don't have slides. I'm just gonna treat everyone 
uh, okay. not as, as a sales prospect, but yeah. just as, as engineers who are just I, curious. We love seeing demos. Yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, so really there's, there's two ways to get started with base 10. One is, Hey, I'm just exploring the different open source models and I want to use them. Um, and, and so that one is really easy. Uh, they're just a click away. There's a library of pre-trained open source models uh, that you know are, are ready to go. A lot of them have been uh, really optimized as well. Uh, like this one, for example, you can see the Tensor TLLM uh, engine that it comes with, and it's like a, a click away for you to go uh, to deploy and run it uh, in, in a dedicated way uh, within your workspace. But the second way, um, really the common way for us, for our products, uh, for our use cases, for our customers, is the fact that they have their own models. Uh, there are some, some are models that they pre-train from scratch. We have foundation model companies using base 10, uh, and, and sometimes models that they have fine-tuned. Uh, and that's the way to bring those custom models to base 10, the on-ramp to base 10 is Trust, which is our open source model packaging uh, and deployment library. Um, we built this, open source this, other people have contributed to it, which is really cool to see. Um, works with different frameworks. Think of it as a very simple scaffolding around your model uh, to get it ready for inference and auto scaling and everything else that, that Base 10 uh, comes with. Um, maybe I'll show just a little bit of code over here. Um, there is a, um, a trust examples repo, which is like a, hundreds of examples of, of trusses built for different models. Uh, so let's go and take a look at one in particular. Uh, let's just do Llama 3. Uh, 8B instruct. I want to show you a real trust just so you can see it's not magic. It's it's not heavy. It's actually quite light. This is the trust for Llama 3, um, 8 billion. The trust is just two files. Uh, it's a config that describes the environment that the model needs to run. It has advanced features around custom Docker images and, um, and other things. And then the second file, which is a Python class with just two important functions. A load that defines what the model should do when it first loads up download the weights from Hugging Face using your private X key, um, and a predict function. Uh, and this is your actual inference path, the code that actually runs when you call the model. Um, this has more code because it supports streaming and some other things, but it's really not that heavy. And so once you package up your model, um, then it's you know, one, one command to, to deploy it on base 10. And then once you do, uh, it shows up over here. This is a real model running in production. Um, it happens to be Whisper, but it works similarly for other models too. Uh, so you can see over here, it's been put behind an API endpoint uh, that you can call um, for streaming, uh, for you know, different environments uh, for the same model. You can uh, give it different hardware uh, that you have access to. Uh, so we, we have access to all these different uh, GPU SKUs, um, including uh, the, the, the MIGD uh, H100s that um, really have been uh, massively helpful for our customers in terms of cost, performance, um, uh, trade-offs. Uh, and uh, then you can uh, uh, configure the, the horizontal scaling. Uh, so here, for example, you can say, I want my model to scale from you know minimum of nine replicas, maximum of whatever, uh, depending on the traffic that it's getting. And then you can see it in action. So if I go over here and you look at the, the observability for the model, so you can see how often your model is being called. So this one, for example, is being called peak, like I don't know, 20 times a second. But then you can also see how it's horizontally scaling. Uh, how many replicas is it bringing it up? And notice that when there's a lot of traffic, it brings up a lot of replicas to meet that traffic. And when there isn't, it brings down the number of replicas to save you money. You don't have to build that. It comes with that functionality out of the box. And importantly, all along, your uh, your SLAs are being met. You can monitor your P50, P90, P99, and you can see that like as the system is the behavior and traffic patterns are changing, as the, the uh, horizontal scaling is kicking in and bringing up and down replicas, you're still meeting your SLAs. <laughs> Lots more observability around you know, CPU usage, GPU usage. Any, anything that your model is logging. Um, and all of this this data, by the way, it's not stuck on base 10. You know, it's, logs are structured logs, and, and the, the metrics are Prometheus-style metrics. Uh, you can export those uh, to your own source of truth. Um, all of that is supported. 
there's there's more to it as well. Um, maybe I will just show you just one last thing uh, that that we did recently that has come in really handy for a lot of our customers uh, is the uh, chains uh, chains product. Uh, so. And here's the story about chains, and I'll make it. I'll make this part really quick. So we kept hearing from our customers that hey, you have this inference layer, the one that I just demoed to you, and that's all good. But that's 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 not our use case. Our use case is not call a model, get the response, and run with it. Our use case is uh, running multiple models uh, in unison, uh, in, in 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 an order, in a series, uh, and 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 getting a response back. And and the the problem that our, our, our product had with that was that as a, as, a, as a client, as a customer, you had to like call these different models one after another. Here's a, a real example of it. So, so we have a customer, Bland AI, great company, who are uh, doing AI phone calls. Think about what it takes to make an AI phone call happen. You have to transcribe what the human said, give that transcription to an LLM to figure out what to say back to the human, and then give that answer to a text-to-speech model. And so if we went with our original product, the, the customer would have to like call the first model, get the response back, call the second model, get the response back. And it's like all of that back and forth is adding a lot of latency. And for a use case like AI phone calls, latency is king. You have to be able to do all of those steps that I mentioned in under 500 milliseconds. Uh, and, and we really couldn't do that because of the network, additional network latency uh, that, um, that the old system or, or the, 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 the normal way of doing it one model at a time was, was adding. And that's why we built Chains. Uh, the Chains is more for multi-model inference that, that allows customers to define the sort of steps that need to happen. Three different models, in this case, you know, Whisper, Llama, and some text-to-speech model, uh, and, and have these run next to each other. And instead of doing all of that network back and forth, uh, then uh, you, you can have these models run in a series uh, close to each other, extremely low latency, and get the response back. Uh, so, so that's really enabled some use cases that honestly, truly were not possible before that. Wow. Um, I mean, it's it's really fascinating just like the optimizations that you've done with on the inference side and how you've been able to use AWS as well as being able to use Tensor LLM to be able to kind of help you with that infrastructure. Yeah, no, it, it really takes it really takes both of those uh, partnerships, both on the uh, you know uh, GPU and model optimization side um, that we've been partnering with NVIDIA, uh, and also on the infrastructure and horizontal scale, uh, where AWS has also come in very handy. I'd love to also understand um, as your startup journey how the NVIDIA Inception program and AWS Activate have been able to help you. And for the, the folks who aren't familiar, both of those are programs that we have for startups to help them to be able to grow their business. Um, but I'd love to hear from your perspective. Yeah, Activate really helped us in the very, very early stages of, of the life of the company um, to, to get us up and running and you know, not have to worry about, uh, not have to worry about too much, especially when you know, we, we, we kind of didn't have anything and we were starting from scratch. Um, Inception came in handy uh, uh, quite a bit later into the life of the company, um, especially as you know we started partnering more closely with NVIDIA on on, on performance. And while performance um, uh, domain, um, we were through Inception uh, introduced to Tensor RT LLM um, before it was announced, which was really cool. They gave us access to it, and then we we contributed uh, back, you know, bug fixes and um, and other things. And uh, that that really put us on on uh, uh, on the right path uh, for uh, being able to really um, sort of like take the power of, of the work that uh, the, the 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 folks at Nvidia had done with with Tensor TLM, bring that to base ten, and then make it easily consumable by the average engineer as opposed to uh, you know the, the the sort of like you know LLM uh, uh, engineers and, and researchers. Uh, so, uh, if it wasn't for Inception, I don't think we would have uh, learned about it until until it was announced. I don't think we would have had the close uh, uh, feedback sessions with them, uh, and uh, and thanks to those, I, I think that it really pushed uh, our products 
forward and like, you know, really we were able to provide more value to our customers. Wow. I love that you were able to get some like hands-on resources to be able to help you throughout your startup journey. Um, and I know we are almost out of time. So for those who want to learn more about uh, Tensor RT and Tensor LLM, you could go to the Abus Marketplace and um, there's an NVIDIA AI Enterprise that you could be able to sign up for if you want to be able to utilize that. There's also an open source version. But if you also saw this demo and you were like, oh, I want to be able to use that get the inference benefits but without doing a lot of the extra work because amir's team has done a lot of the heavy lifting um that's where base 10 comes in so amir how can someone if they wanted to just get started with base 10 like yeah yeah anyone can, can sign up and, and use that the same product that i just showed you but uh feel free to email me and i can give you more credit than by default uh, accounts get uh amir at base 10.co uh and uh, i'll make sure that uh you all get at least 250 dollars credit uh, so they can deploy yeah. these models, you know, have access to to all these different uh, GPUs to uh, deploy and scale and load test your models for free, uh, and then decide if this is the right tool for uh, for your job or if it's not. Love it. Two fifty dollars in credits. Uh, what more can you say to that? So Amir, thank you so much uh, for being here today, and stick around. We've got more coming up on AWS on Air.